hi how are you welcome back to my channel i hope you're doing amazing and today we are going to be doing a video testing out the becca zero products if you did watch my shop with me at sephora virtually video then you did see that i purchased these and i'm very intrigued by these very excited to see what they're about see if they're gimmicky all of the things so this is the foundation i haven't tested these yet because i wanted to get all my real reactions and thoughts on camera so here is the becca zero foundation um it says that this no pigment virtual foundation uses clear light blur technology that diffuses light around the face to smooth and blur imperfections without pigment it has hyaluronic acid in it it's instantly hydrating cools on contact helps perfect skin with a natural matte finish and then we have the highlight, the Becca Zero No Pigment Glass Highlighter. Um, this is a multi-use gloss for face and lips that gives skin a wet look, glass-like effect. Use the doe foot applicator to highlight the high points of the face, can also be applied to the lips. Okay. Another unique thing I really noticed about these products is that the ingredient lists are considerably short. So I thought that was, but I mean they're clear, so. They don't, they obviously don't have like pigments, shimmer or anything in them. The way I want to use the virtual foundation is I want to apply this like I would my normal foundation. So I've cleansed, moisturized, got my skincare on, sunscreen, all of that. And then I'm going to use a primer. I'm going to use the Milk Hydro Grip because it doesn't have any pigment in it, obviously. But I just want to see um, if this helps actually i'll just do the milk hydro grip on one side of my face per the becca instructions on the box you use your little spatula and apply it to your fingertips and then massage it into your face quite honestly looks like a tub of primer like mattifying primer i'll start off with about that much Let's zoom in even more. It's an eyebrow here in my <laughs> foundation. All right. So here's the side without any primer on it. Um, I'm just gonna take it out with my fingertips so you can see the texture of the product moving around a bit. It's like a putty. And then let's do the side with Milk Hydro Grip. I think you can see most of the mattifying happening on my forehead, if anything. But on the larger planes of my face, it doesn't look like it's super mattifying me out. Side with the Hydro Grip, if anything, it just kind of feels a little bit more tacky compared to the other side. I prefer the way the side without primer feels than the side with Hydro Grip. It just feels like sticky to the touch. Um, but that's probably because this isn't, you know, like a proper foundation that the Hydro Grip can grip to. It's like the Hydro Grip is gripping to another primer. All right, so this is after one layer of the Becca Zero. Let's try layering it up just like we would a regular foundation. Again, I'm going to go in with a bead of about that much product. Maybe this second layer would make the skin a bit more matte. I feel like you can kind of tell as I'm spreading it out, it does slightly mattify. So I'm gonna let this second layer sink in a bit, maybe wait 10 minutes and then let's see if anything changes. But here is two light layers all over the face. I'm not noticing any significant differences other than like a slightly more mattified look to my skin. I'm looking in the viewfinder as I talk to you. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's wait about 10, 15 minutes, see if anything changes, and then we'll move on to the rest of the face. About 10, 15 minutes, and I actually feel like my skin looks more matte than it did when I first applied it. It could be in my head, I might rewatch this footage and be like, no, it doesn't, but I feel like it does look a little bit more matte. So this is two layers. Let's put one more light layer because I'm using it like foundation, and typically, you know, you do like a couple light layers. So I'll just get, oh wait. I'm just gonna put this right in the center of my face. And it doesn't give you coverage per se, but I mean, you can see that 
now that I've really started layering it up, I'm getting a lot more matte looking. But something I noticed about the foundation, if you will, is uh, it almost sets in a way. It looks, you know, slippy and slidey as you're applying it, but then in a couple moments, it does set down. So this is three light layers of the Zero foundation. Um, I'm gonna try applying a little bit of other makeup just to see. Concealer seems to be blending out nicely. I do feel like even though this is, you know, a foundation, I feel like I just did a little bit of, you know, spot concealing. I don't feel like I'm putting concealer on top of foundation, if that makes sense. Just a little bit of coverage, but you know, I've only put it under my eyes. The rest of the face is still that zero pigment foundation. I'm gonna quickly fill in my eyebrows and then we will do the blush and bronzer and all of that. All right, let's try contouring. I'm gonna use the Benefit Hula. Hopefully it doesn't get patchy anywhere. That would be my biggest concern. But I'm just gonna do a little bit under the cheekbones. And a little bit on the sides of my nose. Hmm. Looks pretty good. It's not gripping to any specific parts. And for the most part, it's just gliding on top of that. I'm gonna use a little bit of powder bronzer. This is the MAC Next to Nothing. It's actually a face powder in dark deep, but I like using it as bronzer. So I'm just gonna swirl this right on top. Kind of warm up the skin a bit. To highlight, I'm gonna use the Girlactic Face Glow. Okay, honestly, everything is gliding on top of this so beautifully. I was worried it was going to look like dry and crispy but it actually looks really great on top of that. Wow. I'm genuinely impressed with the way the powders are just going on top so nicely. I'm gonna use the Tarte Exposed Blush. And just put that right on the apples and then now we can do the face gloss. All right, so now we can try the No Pigment Glass Highlighter. Completely forgot about this before I did the powder one, but let's see what it looks like on top. So what I'm gonna do is, let's put a little bit on my list. Ooh, that's nice. It's really lightweight. So I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand like this. Spread it out so I can get it really worked into my fingertips. Get a little bit more control and I'm nervous about this. Okay, I'm gonna apply this right to the high points on my face. It's not incredibly sticky. Ooh, that's actually really, really pretty. Especially on top of that highlight, it just gives it a little bit more shimmeriness. Put it like on the bridge of my nose. That looks really nice. Do this. And I wanted to reline my lips. Oh, Lou. What? I'm gonna finish filming this. Sure, I'll just brush my eyebrows. What are you washing? The strawberry cartons, they got strawberry juice all over them. Oh. I wear my sunglasses indoors. Skeet, skeet. Bye. I wanted to line my lips a bit and put the gloss on with some lip liner. I've already ruined the paddle. <laughs> got some lip liner on it. Ooh, I wonder what this would look like on the inner corner. Maybe cute, like on the arch of the brow too. Here's a final close up of the skin with the Zero Pigment Foundation and then the highlight. Um, and then obviously we have like the spot concealer, bronzer, blush, all of that stuff. I will say that the highlight, you definitely feel it. Like it feels a little bit sticky so I don't want to be you know touching my face. I know I'm looking at my viewfinder in this video but it's because I'm also inspecting this for the first time with you. Um, so yeah that's something I noticed. It's like it 
definitely feels a little bit sticky. I genuinely feel like I don't need to be wearing these products for a full day to give you my genuine full of formed thoughts and opinions on them. So I'll zoom you in just so you can see my face as I am speaking about these products, but the Becca No Filter Zero Pigment Foundation retails for $36 and then the Face and Lip Gloss retails for $24. I genuinely feel like you could get this same effect of the Zero Pigment Foundation with any other, you know, primer that's in the same family genre as this one. So all the way from the, you know, Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Primer, which has that soft, slight mattifying effect, or the Smashbox uh, Photo Filter, you know, the Smashbox, you know which one I'm talking about, the one in the clear tube, um, all the way to something you can get at the drugstore, like Maybelline Baby Skin. I feel like it's gonna give you the same effect. You just get that translucent, matte, slightly, you know, soft jelly feeling skin. It's hard to describe, but if you've used a primer in this family, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They slightly mattify the skin, smooth everything out. Because they have that slippery, slidey, and thick gelatinous type of texture, they do fill in the pores, they do smooth out lines, they, you know, blur out imperfections on the skin and just give a little bit more of a smoothed out canvas effect. I don't think you will purchase this at $36 and feel as though your life has been changed. I think you would be better off if you do want like a no foundation type of look. I think you'd be better off getting a really sheer coverage tinted moisturizer or even just getting a traditional foundation that looks a little bit more on the natural side. Do you know what I mean? I just don't think that you'll get your money's worth out of this if it's if you're purchasing it as a foundation and you think it's gonna really change your life. Um, it's not a bad product, but am I gonna use this any differently than I use other primers? No. I will pretty much guarantee you I'm gonna start using this as just like a base primer step. Um, I think it could be really great for somebody that's got particularly oily skin because obviously it does help control the oils on your skin. I did like how this is a lot more hydrating than some of the other mattifying primers and I did like how it feels really soft um, and I like how the rest of my makeup went on my skin on top of it. It didn't get bunched up and everything but you know it's to me traditionally it's going to be performing a little bit more along the lines of a soft mattifying primer. Um, but you know, a lot of times I do just spot conceal and I don't wear foundation. So it's good for days like that as well, but you can get it with like, like I said, anywhere from, you know, really expensive Pat McGrath primers all the way to Maybelline. And then we do have the Becca zero face gloss. Again, this retails for $24. I feel like <laughs> You could use any other clear gloss, and again, you can go anywhere from Revlon's The Gloss all the way to, you know, Milk's Face Gloss. That's a really great one. You get so much more product with that one as well. And, you know, you could use literally anything. You could probably even use Vaseline, and it's going to have a really similar effect as this. Is it a pretty lip gloss? Yes. Um, I do like how it's a little bit more fluid than some of the other face glosses I've tried, but I will say if you're thinking that this is going to change your life and it's going to give you this really glossy, jelly, wet reflection and not be sticky, it's got some stick to it. Like I definitely feel it on my skin. Um, and then one of the problems that you will find with face glosses is that uh, they can tend to pull makeup that you have underneath them off of the skin. Now, if you are wearing just this and just this, there's no pigment for this to pull off of the face, but if you're someone who wants to put it on top, uh, just be aware that it can take makeup underneath it off of it. I purchased these with my own money. I love Becca. It's one of my favorite makeup brands, but I personally do feel like these are not necessities. They're not gonna be life-changing because like I said, you can get equivalent performance products from the drugstore or you probably already have you know higher end products in your collection that can supplement as these um, is this going to replace 
you know, a foundation or a primer that you already have that's in this type of formulation? Probably not. And then this face gloss, same thing. Like I said, you can go all the way from like Revlon's The Gloss, which is clear, or you can, you know, use the Milk Face Gloss, which I've used in many videos. Um, I just feel like these aren't going to change anybody's life and you probably already have supplemental products for these in your collection. Uh, do I think it's gonna take the place of anything in my collection? No, but I mean, I mean, if you wanna try them out of curiosity, it could be worth it, but I really do think you can get the same exact effect with like Maybelline Baby Skin and Revlon The Gloss. You can use them, um, you know, and try out something else from your collection that's like supplemental. But um, if you're looking for, you know, this foundation to look like a true traditional foundation and provide you with the type of look you're going for, it's clear it really can't do all that much. But, um, you know, maybe try it with one of your primers that you have at home and you'll get the same effect. So, I hope you found this entertaining. I was very excited to try these because I wanted to see what it looked like on my skin. Uh, um, and yeah, you got to see it in action. If you do have any questions about this, please feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. Please subscribe if you didn't earlier. And I would also love it if you would come follow me on Instagram and leave a comment just to say hi. Uh, other than that, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this one. Bye.